Hey, what's going on everybody? It's the CD guy, Johnny Z here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel and today I'm going to be taking a look at some disappointing rock and metal live albums from bands I love. If you like these live albums, that's totally cool. They're just records that when I heard them, I left feeling disappointed. So that said, let's get started here. I'm going to go with the Real Live Dead one by Iron Maiden, recorded on the Fear of the Dark tour in 1992 and the Real Live tour in 1993. This is not my favorite era of Maiden. You know, I think after Seven Son of a Seven Son, there was a big decline in quality for Iron Maiden on the subsequent two releases that would follow that being No Prayer for the Dying and Fear of the Dark. I think losing Adrian Smith was a major blow to the band, you know, uh, both creativity and great creatively, I think, and also live as well. Uh, Yannick, no disrespect to him, I think he's a great player, but just could not match the energy that uh, Adrian Smith brought to the Iron Maiden live set. And also, speaking of energy, you know, Bruce Dickinson was a huge part of what made those live sets so great and still does make a lot of Iron Maiden live sets, you know, so high octane and are energetic. But around this time, this is where Bruce has started to check out of Iron Maiden, was mentally checked out, was more focused on wanting to do the solo thing and stuff like that. So by 93, Bruce was kind of halfway out the door with Iron Maiden here. So you can definitely tell he wasn't giving this 100%. This is just not a great collection of performances here, in my opinion, because we know what Iron Maiden are capable of in a live setting but you've been looking at the track listing like i said this is not my favorite era of iron maiden it's not bad it's just pretty underwhelming especially considering how many great live albums iron maiden have next up let's go with got live if you want it by the rolling stones released in 1966 instead of releasing just a one singular live performance of the band at royal albert hall instead were selected uh 10 concert recordings from other sources alongside two older studio tracks which are overdubbed uh with crowd noise to give the impression of an entirely live album so you know, every live album gets touched up in the studio. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but definitely have some hijinks here on display. But most notably, I think the biggest issue I have with this record is the band sounds fine, but it's the overdubbing of the crowd noise. They really just muddle out the sound. Don't love the sound on this record. I think the crowd noise is overwhelming at times and definitely does take away from the performance and those uh, 10 concert recordings that are real. So not a fan of this live album. Not one that I would go back to when listening to the Rolling Stones because, again, they're another band with a great live presence, have a lot of great live records out there, but this is just not one of them as far as I'm concerned. And I think that the overdubbing of the crowd noise really does take away from the performances. Following that up now, let's go with King Crimson and Earthbound, released in 1972. You know, I'll never question the musicianship of King Crimson. I think, you know, regardless of the lineup, King Crimson were always fantastic musicians and always had great instrumentation. So the lineup here, despite falling apart, did a decent job, that being Robert Fripp, Boz Burrell, Mel Collins, and Ian Wallace. So solid stuff here, uh, you know, from a mu musical standpoint. There's some cool improvisations on this record. And of course, that is the first official live release of 21st Century Schizoid Man, arguably their best known song. Long, but the biggest detractor I have for this album is its poor sound quality. You know, because of it being recorded onto a cassette tape, which was a low fidelity recording medium even in 1972, the original masters, you know, could not really be improved upon on subsequent reissues of the CD. So, unfortunately, the sound quality here is very poor, um, definitely not indicative of a King Crimson live set, and really doesn't capture King Crimson's live aura all that well, even though, again, the music is fine, the sound is very bad, in my opinion, and not a King Crimson live release that I go to all that often. I don't own it, I really don't have much of a desire to pick it up outside of the fact that Again, there was some cool improvisation and stuff like that. I do like this lineup of the band, but unfortunately the sound is so poor that I really don't have much of uh, an urge to go out and pick it up and add it to my collection. Next, we have Come Hell or High Water by Deep Purple from 1994. A uh, live album really ruined here by the antics of Richie Blackmore on guitar, uh, acting very erratically here during this recording, distracted by a cameraman to the side of the stage, leading to him returning to his dressing room until the cameraman was removed, leading to a, a longer than usual intro to Highway Star, and of course in the midst of a guitar solo he throws a cup of water at the cameraman you know there's also uh several truncated guitar solo spots throughout the show and in the end uh, Blackmore is seen exiting the stage, a uh, counter from the rest of the bands on the other side of the stage here. So, Richie Blackmore had pretty much mentally checked out of Deep Purple at this point, and the band were just so done with his antics here, specifically on this show. So, it really shows that the Mark II reunion had long since gone sour here. And, of course, you know, when they first got back together for Perfect Strangers, it was great. But, you know, years later, a little bit, you know, about a decade later, uh, things had really returned to the way they were many, many years before. And Richie Blackmore's behavior would be a major issue that really did hamper the performance here in my opinion so is it a fun listen yes but definitely lacking uh, in terms of uh, you know the quality of the performance because of Richie Blackmore's behavior which definitely impacted in my opinion 
I love Rob Zombie, but I think he's a very hit or miss live performer. And I think Rob Zombie Live is a great example of that. Or Zombie Live. This is an album that I picked up, and I was excited to pick it up because, you know, I love Rob Zombie. Uh, it's got a really great set list here, uh, 18 tracks, right? Good stuff. You know, pretty much essential Rob Zombie on here. However, when I listened to it, I just felt underwhelmed. It was just a very uninspired performance, in my opinion. I just kind of left feeling like, hmm, that, that's it, you know? I always felt like Rob Zombie's live shows could go one way or another. They could either be really entertaining or just kind of feel like, eh, middle of the road, you know, not as entertaining as I would have expected or as gripping as well. So this performance to me just sounds like Rob going through the motions here. Don't love this live recording at all. It's just not, it la it's lacking the energy and the fun that I look for in a Rob Zombie live recording. So for that, uh, after I listened to Rob Zombie live, I was pretty disappointed. How about Who's Last by The Who? Recorded on what was supposed to be their farewell tour. Yeah, right. Uh, but you know, this was supposed to be it for The Who at this point, and this was a very lifeless, dead, uh, very lacking in energy live recording, in my opinion. It's a uh, far cry from Live at Leeds, right? But, you know, in my opinion here, really struggles from the band just sounding like they, you know, they, they weren't motivated here live. It, it just doesn't capture the essence of a classic Who concert. So, you know, for me, I really don't like the sound of this album. I don't like the energy either. It just seems like a very tiring listen as far as I'm concerned. I find it to be quite boring as a matter of fact. And, you know, I think there's a great comparison there, or excuse me, a great dichotomy, I think, between Live at Leeds, which is considered to be one of the best live albums of all time, and then Who's Last, which I would consider to be one of the worst, where... It's just such a example of two extremes, right? Of the great and then the very lackluster. So it's kind of interesting to think that the same band could have done that. But this was, again, like supposed to be their farewell tour, which obviously we know now is ridiculous. But, you know, if this was how they were going to go out, it was pretty lackluster. So for me, I don't like this live album. I never listen to it anymore. Who's last? Just not my thing by The Who. Great live band, but doesn't really show it here on this CD. Next, I'm going to go with The Sting by Wasp. Just a really poor sounding live album here, in my opinion. Now, I love Wasp, one of my favorite bands of all time. I love to talk about them here on the channel, but this live album is just ruined completely because it sounds like a bootleg. It's a terrible sound recording here, in my opinion. Totally not indicative of, at all of the powerful Wasp sound that they used to have in a live setting, of course. Now, not such a great live band anymore as Blackie got, is getting older now, but... You know, Prime Wasp, especially with this lineup of, you know, Blackie, Stead Howland, Mike Duda, and Chris Holmes, my favorite Wasp lineup, really, really tight uh, lineup here of the band. But this live album, like I said, the sound quality is so bad that it just takes you out of it. Uh, you know, the track listing is great. This was on the Helderado tour. This is, you know, a great Wasp set list of some really underrated material as well on Helderado. Unfortunately, like I said, the sound quality sucks, and there's not much you could do, do to fix it or to save it, really. You know, um, this was just not a great sounding live album, and it was produced by Blackie Lawless, so it's confusing as to, you know, why this sounded so poorly when he also produced Double Live Assassins a couple of years earlier, and that was, like, the best live album of all time, at least in my opinion. It's, it's definitely up there, so... You know, there's definitely an interesting kind of a, a contrast there between, you know, Blackie's production skills when it comes to one live album versus another. Because on this one, again, like I said, the sound really sucks and it really does take you out of the performance. I'm going to stick with Wasp here for one more, and that's Live in the Raw from 1987. Now, this is a right around the era here of Wasp, the Electric Circus era, where I'm just not a big fan of this particular era of the band. I think that they had kind of remained stagnant in their sound and gotten a bit cheesy with their lyrics as well, whereas they would progress further with the Headless Children a couple years later. Later, but this not my favorite era of the band to be honest with you and you know it's not a great live performance you know, the audio is not fantastic and Chris Holmes sounds completely drunk on this performance so he sounds terrible and you know it's not all live either you know there are some songs that are billed as live they're actually not live as well or recorded in the studio and done pretty transparently so not all that convincing in my opinion so with that said I don't love this live album at all and it's not my favorite era of the band like I had mentioned but Really what makes this a disappointing live album is the fact that some of the tracks here weren't even live. So that wraps up this rant video here, taking a look at some disappointing rock and metal live albums, which should be visible right over here. You know, I didn't realize until I started the YouTube channel just how many unpopular opinions I had, but uh, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Be sure to turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss a new upload. We've got some very exciting uploads coming for the month of October, and be sure to subscribe. Help me reach my goal of 2,000 subs here on YouTube. Every subscriber counts, and we had great growth of the channel over the past weekend with the coverage of Power Trip Festival, and so I thank you guys so much. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and let me know down in the comment section below what are your thoughts on my picks, and you know what are some of your least favorite live albums out there. Be sure to share your most unpopular opinions as well. There are no wrong answers. I want to hear from you guys, so please let me know all that good stuff down in the comments. And until next time, it's the CD guy, Johnny Z, signing off. Take care, everybody.